Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. Today I have an Instagram versus reality for you and it's been a long time since I've done one of these. Honestly, they're a little bit hard to write up and find the original material. But I do get tagged in a lot of videos with suspicious kind of goings-ons. For those who only know me from this skincare channel, to be fair, that's the only place I am. I actually have a degree in editorial and advertising photography. I took a particular interest in digital retouching. So that's kind of where my, not really expertise comes from, but where a lot of my knowledge comes from. I've also worked in the fashion and styling industry previously when I lived in London. So I kind of know a lot of the goings ons behind the scenes. I'll be doing my skincare routine and we're gonna start off with a sponsor for this segment of the video. And that is Zit Sticker. It's been a while since I done a sponsorship with Zit Sticker, but I, love, like I'm, I genuinely love this cleanser. This is the Zit Sticker Cushion Cleanse, a balancing cleanser for acne prone skin. Now, of course, I do not have acne prone skin. What I do have is breakout prone skin that breaks out a lot and very oily skin. So I do tend to reach for cleansers made for acne prone skin. Can't really see through the bottle, but I've used up um pretty much just over half of the cleanser because it's been a cleanser I've been reaching for day and night, mainly because it's so light foaming that it feels nice to use kind of in a weird way calming to use just because it feels soft on the skin and when I put it on I'm like oh okay relax. <laughs> so Zit Sticker say that Cushion Cleanse is a balancing lightly foaming cleanser that deep cleanse pores, soothes breakouts and guards your barrier without stripping of its natural oils. A blend of gentle acids brighten and polish while hardworking botanicals cushion and protect. We have some really interesting ingredients in here that I've come across variations of, but these feel a little bit more unique. So we have Arctic Raspberry and Sea Moss, which is in there to support the skin's natural microbiome. Woolly Thistle Stem Cells. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. To help regulate that sebum production, great for people with breakout oily prone skin. Green coffee to help even out skin tone. Bisabolol, which I've mentioned before and I always pronounce wrong, but that's soothing. That helps soothe any irritation, any flare ups. Um, for me, it, it tends to really calm my redness as well. And then the exponents that we have in here are lactic and salicylic acid. So if I've been wearing sunscreen, I do actually apply this onto my dry skin first. Do myself a nice massage to kind of really break down all that sunscreen, which is this is great at without overly stripping the skin. Rinse away, apply more on damp skin, very lightly, gently foam up and again, massage into the skin, making sure I get into all those corners where I usually break out, where I get very, very oily and then rinse away. My skin is left feeling unstripped, not tight. You know, everything you expect from a good modern day cleanser. But yes, I've been really, really enjoying this. I have been breaking out a lot lately. And of course I've been using this alongside a few other products to help kind of like soothe those breakouts. I don't mind breaking out every now and then, but I do like to kind of keep them under control, kind of limit my picking at them by using soothing ingredients and soothing products. And honestly, this has been amazing. I also thought Zit Sticker would make a great sponsor for this video because Zit Sticker were one of the first brands I saw to really embrace non-retouch skin in beauty product campaigns and actually see models in the pictures who would actually benefit and probably will use the products that they're advertising. So thanks again to Zit Sticker for working with me again and sponsoring this segment of today's video. All the links you'll find in the description box down below. Okay, so let's take a look at this first video. It's very, very interesting to me and I don't really know how I feel about it. Because no one just deserves it the way that, that you do. That's a fake tear. That's CGI. I'm not even kidding. That's a CGI. I know, she doesn't tear. touch it. She doesn't touch it. She doesn't touch it. That's a fake <laughs> tear. <laughs> okay, so looking at this, and I, I've looked at this over and over and over, I have to say, it's a perfect tear. It's like a single teardrop, you know, that just kind of like sits and glistens, and it does look almost fake, but. I don't think this is a fake tear. I don't know what you think, but there are a few reasons why. Number one, when her fingers go near it or cross it, there's no change to it. Obviously, that's what you expect from good CGI. But it's also to the point where where she is kind of like dabbing under her eyelids, you see the tear change shape where she's stretching her skin and um, putting pressure on her skin. And I just do not believe that anybody's gonna put that much time and effort into a CGI tear on a reality TV show. This show is already known for using real-time filters. We know that the skin's filtered on this show. We know that the faces are often filtered as well. But that really does come from a kind of like plug-in and play filter that you can get for 
Final Cut Pro, you know, professional editing software. That doesn't really take a lot of time and effort because it naturally recognizes faces. You can just control kind of like how much filtering you want using a couple of dials. Whereas I feel like a CGI tier, it takes the piss a little bit. I don't really think that scene calls for a CGI tier. All reality shows, you know that a lot of these people, when they cry, they're just like, oh my God. And then nothing really happens. There are no tears. And I think it's just like a little bit, I feel like that's standard and the audience are used to it. We don't really need a CGI tear. I don't know what you think. Right, before I get into the next step, I'm gonna rehydrate my skin. This is the Niacinamide Skin Mist 2% um, from Naturium with Niacinamide and Hyaluronic Acid. As I mentioned, talking about the cleanser, I have been breaking out a bit recently and one of my go-to ingredients for that is Niacinamide. I don't like to overdo it with Niacinamide though, so I do like to use it in like a mist 2% or a serum on its own. And then straight in with the um, Beauty of Joseon Ginseng Essence Water. I recently did a sponsorship with them and I just love this essence. This is my second bottle of it because I've actually been using it on my body as well. Um, winter being here, I get a lot drier than usual. Um, so I've been using it like all up and down my arms, like splashing it on my body. And it's really, really helped just kind of hydrate before I moisturize. You know, treating my body skin how I do my face. The next one is from Fenty Beauty, and this one confuses me a little bit. That's a repost from a makeup artist called Art by Hector. And this is so horribly, like so clearly filtered. The skin is so overly blurred that it actually looks like it was filmed on a camera from the 1990s. Like it looks just poor quality because there is no detail in that skin. The giveaway signs are obviously that the face is incredibly blurred. I did have a comment recently, somebody saying that, how do you know that the makeup just isn't that good? Well, the difference is when you put on makeup, sure, it may even out your skin tone, feel a few pores here and there, but when you walk down the street and you see somebody with really good makeup on, their skin isn't unnaturally blurred to the point where light hits on it differently, shadows aren't working properly, and their pores are popping in and out of focus because that's not real life. That's just not how anything works. No matter how good your makeup is, you're gonna see skin texture. More giveaway signs on this one is like the popping of the filter. And what I mean by that is when, for example, when the brush touches like this, you see the filter moving here, almost where, you see when I'm doing that, you see like a glow going around my skin. So when you're doing that and there's a filter on your skin, the filter has to change to match up with that lighting on your skin. So when I'm doing that, the filter's gonna glitch and change to try and work with the natural light that's falling on your skin. It always looks fake. You can see, especially when it's brushing near the highlights of the cheek as well, that the lighting goes funny, the pores go in and out of focus. And then it's just incredibly blurred. I don't know why really good makeup artists do this. He's obviously clearly insanely talented, like very, very good. I don't think he really needs to show a filter, but also this isn't a reflection of his work. I don't know who he is, to be honest with you, I'm not into the makeup scene, but I'm guessing he's already well established to the point where he doesn't have to kind of fake the results of his hard work and his good work. So it seems a little bit strange to me. I also don't like when brands repost these heavily filtered videos because again, it's not a reflection of their product. People will look at that foundation now, concealer, whatever it is, I don't know the difference, and think that's the result they're gonna get. The issue here is as well is nothing's happening. So when you look at the video, he comes with his like little, um, what's it called, mixing tray, I don't know what it is, with the makeup on. Then he takes the brush to the, the model's face and there's no difference because it's already blurred the skin. You can't see what the product's supposedly doing because that skin isn't real and the skin's already got a preset tone, texture, and color to it. It's, it's just so bizarre. I don't know why people look at that and think, oh, I'm gonna post that because it looks, it, it like it's, you can't see a filter when you clearly can. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go in with Super Saturated Barrier Support Serum by Experiment. I've been trying this for ages now. They only just launched it earlier on in the week, but they sent me a lab sample. I wanna say, when did their new mask come out? I've been using it for ages, ages, and I've been dying to get, they only sent me a little sample and they use it all up super quick, so I've been dying to get my hands on this. But the key thing about this is it uses glycerin as its main hydrating ingredient instead of um, hyaluronic acid because, in my opinion, experiments and a lot of professionals' opinion, glycerin is superior to hyaluronic acid when it comes to hydration and retention. 
Why is it not focusing on my face? But I will talk about this serum. Oh God, I need to poke myself in the face in. Serum more because it's amazing to use in conjunction with their reusable silicone masks. So here's a slightly different one. Here is an influencer talking about their sponsored jobs. I don't know who this person is. I don't recognize them. Um, this is from an account called The Truth of TikTok and I was tagged in it. You don't do many ads. I do. But you wouldn't know it's an ad. <laughs> no, you know all the companies that are like, don't put ad. What? No, there's loads of companies that say that. There is. I don't know who she is, she's clearly English, and by UK law, that is illegal. You can't do that. I know that's common in America for a lot of brands to message influencers and be like, do not say that this is a sponsored post. And to be honest with you, a lot of influencers I've talked to, they will call them out on it, they will email back, they'll share their emails on Twitter, saying how that's wrong and they will never work with a brand who do that. This lady clearly doesn't care. She states in other videos that it's only when she's doing things like nappy ad, like diaper adverts um, and things like that, like it's different, like it's okay. Like it's, oh, it's only like diapers, it's only nappies, like who cares? It doesn't matter what the product is. It doesn't matter what you're advertising. You must disclose your adverts. Sadly, this isn't a one-off case. And even to this day, I make these videos calling out brands for doing undisclosed sponsorships, influencers, like dodgy adverts. And I like to think I'm very open about my ads. Like, you always see ad, I always say sponsored because it is the law, and I would do anyway. But to this day, I still get people questioning whether I'm, you know, secretly sponsored by other brands, where I'm hiding sponsorships, because there is that natural distrust that's always going to be there, because there are influencers like this who don't disclose their ads, despite it being the law. I don't know what's happened to her. We'll follow up with her. Should we report her? <laughs> is that really? You should, if you see influencers doing this, report them. There have been influencers who have been fined for stuff like this. Their management messaged their management because, you know, it sounds like we're being petty, but as an influencer, this kind of stuff pisses me off because this is an influencer who gives other influencers a bad rep because she is one of, we, what I unfortunately feel like is many types of influencers who don't disclose their ads. Um, and just take advert after advert after advert. Like, I know I've had a busy end of year <laughs> as far as sponsorships go, but to not disclose them is a whole other deal. So I'm gonna go in with an eye cream. This is, of course, the Glow Recipe Guava Vitamin C Bright Eye Gel Cream. I like this one just because of, like, this instant kind of, like, luminosity it gives under my eyes. Makes me look more awake than I actually am, as well as just really hydrating. There's a lot of eye creams nowadays that just kind of feel like a layer to put under your eyes. Whereas this is hydrating, it's moisturizing. It feels like it's actually doing something rather than just making sure I don't get tr like crusty under eyes. Should we circle back to the Kardashians and this video that I was tagged in so much? Um, so I gotta be real with you guys. You look like f***ing clowns. Oh, I'm not f***ing kidding. Remember what I was just talking about with the CGI tear? There are real-time face filters that you're gonna see across a whole bunch of reality TV shows. We're talking all the Real Housewives, Married to Med, the Kardashians. I don't think it's as common in UK shows, so you're not gonna see it on Love Island, things like that. But next time you're watching The Confessionals, especially of any reality TV show, look at their skin and compare it to the reality shots of the rest of the episodes and the series. Very, very different. The Kardashians in particular, as you can see, the face was warping there. What's the name? Uh, Chris Jenner's face was warping because they've slimmed her face down using a real-time filter. You can get these on your phone. They're super undetectable, super effective at what they do. Look, if I do it now, this one I would just be using my phone. I'm bringing my phone up to my face. It's gonna change, it's gonna glitch. Here we go, you see the phone's wobbling probably. As we know, these reality shows are usually scripted. There's nothing real about them. They're usually manipulated. The drama is about as real as how their faces look in a lot of these reality TV shows, and that's not real at all. I know the Kardashians get a lot of flack. This isn't just the Kardashians, as I mentioned. Selling Sunset, you'll see this as well. It is everywhere, everywhere. I was tagged in a picture of Jennifer Lopez a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and here she is with a bendy background. And how do we know that picture frame isn't just naturally bendy? Because of this picture where she's sitting down and it's a straight line. This isn't advertising anything. It'll be different if we're talking about her skincare line and she was photoshopping her skin. 
But honestly, this is the sad thing when nowadays, as I mentioned before in all these videos, this is what a lot of women feel like they have to do. Because I promise you, despite how amazing she looks in these pictures, I bet you she gets hate comments about her body. She probably does. She's a, lay she's a woman in the public eye. Unfortunately, nowadays, that means she's gonna get comments about her body, her looks, all the fucking time, all the time. Do I think it's sad that people feel like they have to do this? Yeah, I do. And honestly, that's where we are in the digital social media world today. I do like look at a lot like Gen Z content and notice how little filters and body mods that they're doing when it comes to, not surgery, they're still, you know, getting a few plumped up bits here and there. I'm cool with that, I do that too. But there's a lot less digital retouching not only on people's own personal, like, social media pages, but also when it comes to beauty brands. It's all about real skin, it's all about texture, it's all about, you know, embracing what's there and working with what's there rather than kind of creating these images of perfection. So this image is nothing crazy, like, of course people retouch their bodies. It's sad, but it's true, it's just what happens. She's not advertising anything here. We've all seen her in real life, not in real life, but paparazzi. We know she looks incredible and she, she doesn't have to do this. But the world we live in means that she feels like she has to. I don't know if I showed this in the last video, but this is an advert I got tagged in and messaged a lot. This is a brand called Skin Labo Beauty. Let's have a quick look at this. First of all, how fake do her under eye bags look? It literally looks like they've got some like eyeshadow and just gone like this with a finger. The translated caption says, immediate result with intensive lift serum, eliminate pots and eye lines, try it for free. So this is gonna be one of those under eye creams that stretches the skin. They exist like that famous Peter Thomas Roth video that we've all seen that is real. It forms like a temporary film that lifts and stretches the skin. Once you wash it off, those effects are gone. These products do exist, they are real. What they're not gonna do is get rid of under eye bags because that's not about how stretchy or puffy your under eyes are. It's about how um, thin under your eyes are. The pigment that you may have on top of your skin and the blood vessels all that under your eyes. So that that product won't specifically help with dark circles. If they're fake like they are in this video, of course it's gonna work. They clearly just put some shitty makeup on, washed it away and applied this eye cream and also applied a filter over the skin. And you can tell because even though it's a low quality video, you can still see some texture and tone and definition to her face. When she's like, oh my God, this is amazing. You can see a clear blur under her eyes. It's just very, very flat. And the filter changes as she moves her face around. This is false advertising, of course. I, I really doubt anyone believes this, but I don't know. I don't know, because people believing that green stick thing, you know, the green stick, and then they had seeds on their nose and chin, and people like, is this real? It's obviously not real. I get tagged in Ricky Sandu's videos all the time, and I'm obsessed with them. She's a beauty content creator, but what I love about her content is that she shows makeup routines, skincare routines, her skin in such high quality and close up, you see real texture. The real texture we were talking about at the beginning of the video, where no matter how good your makeup is, you are still gonna see your pores, you're gonna see fine hairs on your face, fine lines, texture, and her content is incredible. I'm gonna show you this video, I think I might have showed you it before, but it's it deserves being seen again. Please go check out her videos if you haven't already. Her TikTok, her Instagram are amazing. I think that video is her using FacePick, Face app, which is a, it's just a, it's a crazy filtering app because you can make so many changes to your face, adding makeup, changing your eye color, the shape of your face. You can even make it as um, obvious or as subtle as you want. And the changes are very, very subtle. When it comes to the women's filters, it gives you that instant, what I refer to as Instagram look, like influencer, Instagram influencer makeup and face. I'm just gonna apply the overnight hydrating sleep mask from Bubble. Um, I've not been overly interested in Bubble, but this night mask is incredible. I'm using it during the day because it's just a little bit dry. My skin's a bit dry and it's cold out there. It leaves my skin very plump and dewy overnight. 
But yeah, that app is like, I'll put a few samples, like I'll take a screenshot. And then I'll put a few samples of what you can do to that picture here. And you'll see like, even like changing your hair is so well done and sometimes undetectable. That is actually terrifying. But I think now when people see this kind of like default Instagram face, people are starting to question whether it's real. I think people are noticing it more and more. And here's the thing, like that's fine for influencers, but celebrities will have a photographer at an event wherever they go, taking pictures of their outfits, all that kind of stuff. The celebrity will then sit down and pick pictures, send it off to the retoucher for them to then post on Instagram, the social media, even these pictures that look like paparazzi pictures in the moment, they're professionally retouched. And unlike Face App or Facetune or Snow or anything like this, it's very, very hard to detect that, that they've been professionally retouched. And going back to what I was saying about the um, reality TV, we've spoken about this before, but in films, there are so many things they can do to Hollywood actors. They have programs that can make them look younger, remove wrinkles. It was the um, program, software, whatever that was used for the Benjamin Button film that they now use in just movies to make people look younger all the time. They also get stand and lookalikes and they can merge their skin with the actor's skin so that they look younger. And I wanna finish on this really, really interesting TikTok um, of a lady who talks about Chinese dramas. In particular, she has a series called Fake It Till You Make It in Chinese Drama, where she talks about the digital retouching in Chinese dramas. Now, again, this isn't just limited to Chinese dramas. This is reality TV, Hollywood films, big budget movies, all that kind of stuff. But this is a really good example of what they can do. Fake it till you make it in Chinese drama part seven. Every star on screen has glowy and flawless skin. Even pores are barely visible. If you think this is all natural or skincare, you are too naive. All the blemishes were taken care of frame by frame in post-production. Yuan Bingyan wanted to show how pretty she looked at the beach, but her face shape changes four times in seconds. This actress's dark circles will be touched, but the editor accidentally missed the frame and exposed the truth. You gotta admire the master craftsmanship of the editor. Dark circles were meticulously erased. An editor complained that her eyes almost went blind, modifying Yang Mi's eyebrow shapes in Novoland per eclipse. In the final product, eyeshadow colors were darkened, double eyelids were widened, skin was smoothed. In the movie Wukong, Nini demanded her acne to be retouched. The perfect skin you see on screen is just a fake face manually created by the editor. And it's done all the time, all the time all the time. It's so undetectable nowadays that a lot of people think it's just down to good lighting, very good makeup, or the celebrity in fact does just have very, very good skin. Perfect eyebrows, no under eye bags, no, it is meticulously retouched all the time, all the time. So there we go, there we have it. That is my routine, my skincare routine. And thank you so much for tagging me in those videos to react to. And thank you again to Zit Sticker and their Cushion Cleanse for sponsoring the beginning segment of today's video. All the details are in the description box down below. Keep tagging me. These videos, I, I just find them so interesting. You can check out the whole Instagram versus reality playlist here, some general light entertainment here, and I'll see you over there. <laughs>